All right. Thank you for joining us today for this session of the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series. Uh, the K-12 BITS program is a new training initiative to help augment your internal training efforts. Harnessing our community of K-12 Blackboard schools, BITS will share top strategies and pedagogy for both increasing teacher efficiency and improving learning outcomes. K-12 BITS is free and easy to participate and available to all teachers, academic leaders, and Blackboard Learn administrators. My name is Katie Gallagher. I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager for Blackboard's LMS Solutions, and I'll serve as the moderator for the Key 12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series. I'm always open to new ideas for topics for this series, and please let me know if you're interested in presenting in a future session. Just email me at katie.gallagher at blackboard.com with any ideas or suggestions. Um, I wanted to introduce Janine Richardson and Colleen Smith today as well. Uh, thanks to both. Uh, Janine is a product expert and Colleen is from our K-12 marketing team. They'll be helping me to answer questions uh, today in the chat. And um, this, we will be uh, joining you for the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series this whole spring. So thank you, everyone. I wanted to let everyone know that each webinar in this series will be recorded. You can search for the Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series playlist on the YouTube channel or the K-12 specific playlist. And I've got um, the addresses to both of those on this slide. Um, you'll each be receiving a recording of this presentation and the slides a few days after each webinar by email. In addition, you'll receive an invitation to participate in an online professional learning community on course sites designed to augment the series and create an avenue for ongoing collaboration and dialogue amongst our K-12 schools. Uh, please accept this invitation and participate in the new online PLC. Um, all Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series webinars are free and open to all. Um, when you go to the site at blackboard.com slash bits, Look for the K-12 icon here to identify these special sessions, but you're welcome to attend any session within any of the four BITS tracks. Our next K-12 BITS session uh, following today will be Blended Learning, Disrupting the Factory Model, and it will be held next Monday, March 31st at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time, and it will be led by Angelique Kobler, Diana Bailey, and Danira Flores from Lawrence Public Schools in Kansas. Today we're very pleased uh, to have Dina Myers and Christine Davis from BlendedSchools.net uh, to explore interactive online lectures. We all hate sitting through boring slideshows and uneventful lectures. As teachers, we know that students learn best through active involvement. We also know that online learners thrive when they get immediate feedback in their activities. Find out why they at BlendedSchools.net are beginning to take lesson presentations to the next level by infusing opportunities for the student to actively participate. This interactive lecture will follow research-based practices from Habits of Mind by Art Costa and Ben Atalek and the Marzano Research Laboratory Instructional Strategies. Dina Myers has worked in K-12 education for 21 years as a teacher, instructional coach, technology integrator, and director of technology, and the last five years with BlendedSchools.net as the director of curriculum. As director of curriculum at Blended Schools, Dina oversees the management and training of practicing teachers to create over 190 online courses while also providing curriculum-related professional development to the member districts. Under Deanna's direction for BlendedSchools.net courses have been honored with the International Exemplary Course Awards. Deanna has a Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education, a Master's Degree in Education and Instructional Systems Design, and certificates from Drexel University in Educational Administration and Penn State in Instructional Technology. Christine Davis is an Instructional Support Coordinator for the Blended Schools Network, Christine has worked for BlendedSchools.net for five years, providing professional development and support for K-12 teachers. Prior to joining the Blended Schools uh, net, net team, Chris taught art and digital media for 12 years. She was a recipient of the 2012 Blackboard Catalyst Award for an exemplary course titled Teaching Online. So welcome to both Dina and Christine. 
And Hi, everyone. Hi. And Dina, should we pass the controls to you right now um, in the session? Um, we can give it a shot. Great. Great. There we go. Okay. Be able to advance the slides. And I'm going to mute myself for now. Thank you, Deanna. You're welcome. So thank you, Katie, for the great introductions for both of us. Um, we're really not as pretentious as our biographies might make us seem. Um, we're just two ladies that love working with teachers that are out there in the workforce to create engaging online learning opportunities for kids. Um, so today's conversation is going to be specifically about how we equip students with the new knowledge or content or skills that uh, we would typically do in a face-to-face -face lecture or reading in a textbook in a more traditional educational setting. Um, so through our online course development work, um, we've come through some, some decisions on how to create this lecture, per se. Um, you know, and sometimes lectures are seen as this, this uh, evil thing, and they're really not if done correctly. So we'll take you through some things that um, we've learned along the way, and we're certainly up for listening to anything you want to share with us. Um, because we're going to we're continuing to learn to how to make this uh, better even the next time we work with teachers to create these lectures. So I'll take you through, through some of the theory that uh, Chris and I uh, have used with our teachers. Um, first, I want to start with uh, the idea that maybe you want to, and of course, someone's going to call me while I'm on this webinar. Sorry if you hear the beeping. Um, during this presentation, I would suggest that you, um, like we do to our teacher, our, our students who are viewing any other video recorded lecture or whatnot, that you grab a piece of paper and you make some notes as you're listening to the presentation. Um, and this is just one of my favorites with uh, where you just simply make three columns, decide to write down any questions you have as we go through. And any think marks, just times you want to think about that question um, each time it pops up into your mind. And then summarizing what we're uh, talking about as we go through. Uh, just a suggestion to try to model what we would model with our lectures. So what do we know? We know that students learn best, best through active involvement. And we also know that, that online learners thrive when they get immediate feedback. So we try to build this into the way we design lectures. We use basically this simple, um, uh, what am I looking for, code. Uh, what's that called? Someone help me out. Uh, acronym, thank you. Acronym, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> simple acronym that stands for connect, organize, tool code, and exercise or elaborate. And we'll go into each one of these as to what those words really mean. So the first one is a connection. So when you're designing your lecture, um, we want to first come up with um, what was maybe your hook to get kids to start to listen to you um, and engage with the content right out of the way. Um, it's the bait, you know, it's kind of reel them in and get them, get them thinking. A lot of times in a full lesson, we'll talk about this as an anticipatory set or a bell ringer if you're in the classroom, um, things like that. But I've also listed here that there's really four different categories that these hooks fall in, or these getting started type activities. And um, like you'll get this presentation, so um, I'm not going to go through each one of them, just so that I'm sure we have time for questions later. Um, but there are different ways to look at it from a mastery standpoint, um, understanding and, and trying to focus them on something that really makes them de think deeply about the content to get started. And this goes back to the research from Habits of Mind. So in this connections piece, um, we always want to make sure that they connect to the background and any background information they bring into this, this lecture that you're giving them of new content so that they connect old knowledge with new knowledge. Um, and just some suggestions here on, on ways to do that, giving them time to stop and think as you're going through the lecture and building that into the script you build for yourself or just your notes you're building for yourself if you don't uh, use a full script when you create a, an online lecture. 
let's think about this a second. How do you utilize hooks um, in or prior knowledge in a face-to-face -face lecture? If it's worked for you as a teacher in a face-to-face -face environment, there's generally a way to tweak it to work well for you in the online environment. So how can you learn what you already know works and build it into this recorded lecture? One of the things that works well for me, and in, in, as I was in the previous slide, is, is that controversy. Um, I'm one of the, I, my teaching style is generally as I pose something that's going to get people to, you know, a little bit of an argument of state, and that works for me. If that works for you, use that in your online lectures. I'm going to pause for just a second to see if anybody um, has any thoughts they want to share about how they connect with students, um, even if it's a virtual connection like this recorded lecture style is. How do you connect uh, prior knowledge to the new knowledge you're bringing out? I'll just pause a moment for questions. So, so thank you, Dina. Um, this is Katie again. Uh, for everyone that's on the call, please use the chat and just make sure it uh, shows um, send to all participants if you can uh, to respond back to Deanna. Thanks, Katie, for the heads up there. All right, so let's move on. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. I'm not sure if I should be Katie or not. No, I'm not seeing anything yet either. Okay. All right, so I'll move on. So the, the sec part of that um, acronym is the organization or the chunking of information in uh, manageable bytes for students. Um, the way we work with teachers on this and the, the, the easiest way for them to put some, some concrete uh, reasoning behind this structure is that uh, for them to build a visual organizer as they build your lecture. So basically, um, choose a graphic organizer that meets your your um, lecture needs or the type of content or skill that you're trying to introduce to your students, or not trying, you are. Um, and use that organizer to uh, organize yourself and chunk out the information and then provide either a skeleton of that or organizer or um, some derivative of it to students as they go through the um, video and lecture, that they're engaging in at least in an independent manner right away with the content. Um, and then, as you'll see in number three here, and I'm not sure, I think, let me find the pointer. I think I have a pointer here. Um, number three here, where um, build in times throughout the lecture where you say stop the video, record what you've heard, rewind if you need, something along those lines and maybe something a little more engaging than what the script I wrote there. Um, show a problem, have them stop it, try it, then give them the answer. Um, ask them to stop and reflect and then reflect yourself in a, in a metacognition type way as a teacher to model that for your students in the online lectures. So. Uh, at the end of the organization piece, think about how do you organize any new information you're given. So as I'm talking to you today, hopefully I'm giving you something new that you haven't heard before. How are you organizing what I'm saying for your own learning style? Um, and then maybe how do you use graphic organizers when you teach or when you work with um, building online courses? Where do you use uh, some sort of organizing manner for new content versus how um, it connects with old content and maybe um, things that are just being introduced? So again, if you have any any reflections, please let me know um, through the the uh, chat, and I will pause and, and we'll talk through some of these things. So the next piece is the D in the acronym, and this is the deeper processing. Um, and basically, um, the rule of thumb here is just using those visual, visuals and physical aids that um, make it, you give them another connection. It's kind of hard to give them a connection when you're looking online to uh, a taste or a smell, but we definitely can use uh, images to drive that that deeper connection. And one of the things I want to caution you on is to make sure you use images 
where it's going to create connections and deeper learning and deeper processing of the information. Try not to use images just for images sake. But there's a lot of flexibility when you're recording a lecture on how many different types of images you can bring in to your lectures. So uh, use that to your advantage for processing. Um, and this is just some of the research here that um, most of this is coming from uh, the Habits of Mind research where that deeper processing um, is students store uh, content related to an image and text, obviously it's going to um, be learned better or deeper than if they only um, learn it from the textual stage. So that's you know basically what we're talking about here is to add those visual aids. When you're narrating, you want to make sure that you do have that varied tone in, in the narration or or try not to narrate. I even tell uh, my teachers that sometimes they want to write a full script for themselves and then make it perfect and flawless in the recording. You know what, sometimes if you have a little oopses and a little like, oh, sorry, let's go back and try that again, it makes you real and it's not so rehearsed that it's very boring and blah and, and this, this whole varying of tone leads into that. So don't get so caught up on, because it is a videoed lecture, sometimes people think it has to be perfect. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. You don't want a lot of ums and ohs and, and you know, stumbling around like I'm doing right now. But you do want to be real to those students because you are their teacher. They're connecting to your voice, the visuals, and the text that you're sharing with them. Uh -huh. And I see Chris is saying that she encourages people to stand up and use their hands like they were teaching. And if you could see me talking right now, I am probably, I know I'm using my hands. <laughs> So um, back to the, the dual coding, after you've decided what your objective is for your lecture, make sure that you know um, what your plan is to equip the students for, the, for this um, new knowledge and skills. Um, and then lastly, the fun part, I think, is the exercise piece of that. So when we build in those exercises to, um, to reinforce and to check their understanding. One of the things that um, we suggest is that um, at least every one to two minutes for an elementary lecture and every two to three minutes for an upper or, or high school uh, student that there's some sort of questioning. And I come back to these four areas of the types of hooks that I talked about. But these are the type of questions you want to make sure you vary along the way through your lecture. Um, and if you were, were creating a lecture for, for my or for blended schools, we had a limit of five minutes for each section of a lecture. Um, and then we want people to take a break and do an action before they do something again. And those type of things, I think I still have some screenshots in here. Um, yeah, we do things like these little, just little interactive games, drag and drops, labeling activities, sorting activities, pairs activities, um, and these all align, I kind of have these in the PowerPoint here, they align with uh, the research strategies that Marzano has uh, proven that there's a great deal of, of just applying these small strategies will increase learning by quite a large percentage, and each one's a little different. Um, but I did cite that research here that you'll have access to. Um, but we we, re, we asked that they do some sort of similarity differences activity, some sort of homework or practice. And homework's a tough one because online is a little different view of homework and what that means. Uh, but we think of that as homework as a guided practice type activity. Um, Definitely want non-linguistic representations. There's a lot of research lately about how today's child or, or students and even young adult learners are lear uh, storing information visually and not in text like you know early research or like when I was in school. Um, so that's something for you to definitely think about to make sure that you have non-linguistic activities and representations in there. And then the, the organizations which we, we have talked about before and some visual cues in your videos. 
Um, and then just kind of in a, a nutshell to recap a little bit is we're going from uh, these four stages of making that stronger connection here. Um, and then a clear organization of what the content is. Try to dual code that and for deeper processing, you know, to visuals, audio, text, whatever you can do to do as many different avenues there. It will definitely build a stronger memory of the content of the new skill or knowledge you're trying to convey. And then kind of as our culminating task here, um, I'm going to shift and, and let Chris have the mic, and she's going to take you through um, some of the, the tools that we use for blended schools for our uh, lectures. Okay, thanks, Deanna. So I'm going to share a resource with you, and you're welcome to, to visit this resource during this presentation if you like. But this is a, a video sharing site that we use with our course developers, and I'll put the link in the chat area as well. But you can see it there at the top of the slide. It's efntube.blendedschools.net. And this is a site where when our teachers who are uh, developing courses have created some lesson presentations, these interactive lectures, then they need a, they need a way to get them into the courses. So they do that by uploading them to the CSN tube, which works a lot like YouTube, except that it's all instructional content. And when they upload their videos to BSN tube, they then are able to categorize them. And you can see that, that BSN tube has categories based on grade levels and also based on subject areas, which makes these lesson presentations easier to find, but then also a teacher can, after uploading them to BSN2, they can either link to these presentations or embed them using the sharing button below each video presentation. So once they've uploaded their videos, they then can embed them into their courses so that they appear directly for students. Now remember that Deanna mentioned that we have our teachers sort of chunk their lesson presentations. So maybe in one lesson, they have a series of two or three videos that are in four or five minute segments. So there may be a series of videos that are uploaded to BSN Tube and then embedded. And there can be activities that accompany or follow these lesson videos so the students have that, that action to take um, in between steps or immediately following one of the presentations. So uh, if you want to explore BSN Tube, you're more than welcome to do so. When you get there, notice that you have the subject areas or the grade level areas to click on to search for videos that have already been created. And if you find a video you like, you're welcome to use it in one of your own courses. The other great thing about BSN Tube is that you can upload your own videos to BSN Tube. If you need a place to host your videos that you want to share with your students, you can get an account. It's a link at the top of the SN2. And then once you have an account, you can return here to log in and continue to upload videos. Creating an account for BSN Tube is pretty simple. Once you click the create or uh, get an account link at the top of the SN Tube, you're going to see a form that you fill out to request your account. And you just fill out this form. It is going to ask for your Blackboard username because our teachers already have a Blackboard username that we give them. But if you're sitting in on this, this presentation today and you would like to have a, a BSN Tube account, then you can put this uh, BB bits as your Blackboard username and then we'll recognize you as somebody from this presentation when we process this account request. And then there's another box on the form where you would fill in with your institution name so that we know who you are and where you're from so we understand who is uploading these videos to our resource. Um, but you're welcome to add videos to it. And there are thousands of videos already there, so hopefully you'll find a video that you can utilize in one of your courses or that you can let a colleague know about and use in their courses. Uh, but it's a great way to uh, get snippets of your lectures into your courses and then sort of wrap some activities around them. 
That's great, Christine. Um, I just want to interject really quickly. Be, you know, feel free to you know, add feedback and questions in the chat or in the Q&A box, wherever you're more comfortable uh, throughout the presentation. That, that's a great resource, Christine. Thank you. Okay, great. So I'm just going to kind of pause there for a moment before handing it back to Deanna to see if there are any questions that you have about BSN2. Uh, I anticipate that you'll probably visit that site and you'll have questions once you do. So uh, definitely let us know if a question comes up. When you do have an account at BSN2, you will see that when, you, when you're ready to upload a video, there is an Add New link at the top of the website and then you can select media upload from the list of choices. And once your video is uploaded below the video, that's where you'll see your options for sharing the video. So okay, it looks like questions are not coming in at this point in time, so I'm going to go ahead and, and pass it back to Deanna for any, any closing that she has. But do let us know if you have questions about this resource along the way. Thank you. Okay, um, I see I have a controls. Um, what I wanted to just remind you, and I, I, I went through a lot of information of theory in the beginning because Chris has the fun stuff um, to get in play. But I wanted to show you the, the references, and, and Katie, I'm, I'm correct, that they will get a copy of the PowerPoint? Yes, we'll um, make a PDF of the PowerPoint. Good. Um, I encourage you to take a look at some of the research I cite here and to um, maybe even question some decisions or what I have shared because um, you know we learn from each other and questioning and sharing and growing and if you have any feedback as to have you ever considered this or this is what we do, um, we would love to get that feedback from you. Um, and if you have any questions on things that we didn't cover, because I really just, I don't want anybody to think that this is the, what a whole lesson of, a, of that I'm recommending is the whole lesson of a, in a course. Um, in a blended schools lesson, we have um, nine different components that wrap together to work uh, to create a full lesson for students. And this is just one piece of that nine, those nine steps. Um, but I felt like it was a piece that sometimes people overlook. Um, and, uh, you know, and sometimes we just start recording a lecture without planning. And um, I definitely, through the years, this is where teachers will come back to me and say, Deanna, well, I'm glad I learned how to put that presentation together. I use it all the time with my kids now. Um, you know, and there's been a lot of buzz about the flipped classroom and all of that. And it's great, um, but you, you do have to put some thoughtful work together prior to um, sitting down and uh, recording your screen and just starting to talk. Um, so I really wanted to spend some time, and Katie gave us nice enough to give us the floor about uh, interactive presentations. And um, this can be uh, definitely we are just at the tip of the iceberg of how things can be more interactive, and Blended Schools is looking to grow to make this even our presentations more interactive with new technologies that we're exploring. Um, but again, if you have any questions or any, um, there's another page of references there. It's how I, I like uh, I like to read research. I'm a bit of a geek like that. Sorry. Um, but if there's if there's any um, any questions or anything you want to share, please feel free to reach out um, following the conference. Um, you will have our contact information, I believe. And um, Katie, um, I do not have anything further after that. Okay. Uh, before we move to some closing comments, are there any questions from the group? Please you know, post them in chat or Q and A. But um, while we're waiting for a moment to, to see about that, Deanna and Christina, I want to thank you for, for this wealth of information and lots of great tips and resources uh, for all the participants to use. Okay, so no, no questions from Jason, but thanks for all the great information. Christine has shared um, the link to the Soft Chat Cloud. Okay, what does BSN and BSN tube mean? A question for how little. 
<laughs> it's a, it's another acronym, uh, Blended Schools Network. We're a network of schools that began in Pennsylvania, growing outside of the states of, of the state of Pennsylvania, uh, where we um, have we work as a as a network or a community of schools uh, for technology professional development and curriculum sharing. So that's what BSN we use everywhere, but it's Blended Schools Network. Great. It has officially changed, Katie. So we are now Blended Schools Network. Network. Okay, I kept interchanging them as I was going through because I always knew it as BlendedSchools.net. So I apologize for the okay. introduction. Um, there's another question from Pam Reland. I'm interested in what tools are used for video capture and then the development of the lectures. Well, Chris, I'll let you take that one if you don't mind. Okay, sure thing. Uh, the, the tool that we recommend for our developers to use is a website called Screencast-O-Matic as their screen capture tool. And uh, maybe while I'm chatting here, Deanna, you could put the link in the in the chat area there. Screencast-O-Matic is, is basically a free resource that's available on the Internet. It allows you to create uh, a recording of your screen and your voice and do some minor editing. However, there is a paid version of Screencast-O-Matic, and, um, and, and that just removes the Screencast-O-Matic watermark from the finished product and gives you a little more, um, a little higher end editing than the free version would allow you to do. Um, the Screencast-O-Matic is really simple for people to use because when you go to that website, there's just a big blue button that says start recording. And, and so you click it and you are going. You are recording your screen and it's capturing your voice and uh, so that's the tool we use for making the recordings and then doing some minor edits. And then, of course, BSN Tube is the tool that, that we use for them to post their videos to um, so that they can then be embedded. And we utilize, I gave a link in the chat area a few moments ago to a, a sample lesson. And that is an example of a lesson that would be inserted into our Blackboard courses as an LTI link. But that lesson contains on, on the second page um, some of the video presentations like we talked about. But you can see it in the context of a lesson um, with the activities and interactives that, that wrap around it. Great. Um, so I, also I, wanted, I also wanted to mention that we do use a second tool um, with a, a that's called Explain Everything through um, iPad. It's an iPad app. Um, use it, we use the Dropbox to um, to publish the the lectures. It's a really really inexpensive thing. Two ninety nine, three ninety nine app, um, but it is very very nice recording software. Allows you to annotate, talk, and many other things. Oh, that's interesting. I, I think our presenters um, two weeks ago also mentioned explain everything. Um, I, I had one other. I had one thing to add to this question, um, which, which also, as a follow-up question to Christine and Deanna, um, another free resource I've used for screen capture is Jing, um, and it records up to five minutes. Um, and the paid version is called Camtasia. So I would throw that out there. So I wanted to ask Christine and Deanna, um, have you explored it as well? The screencast thematic provide benefits? And then um, the second thing I was going to add, if you're not recording your screen, you could certainly use video everywhere within Blackboard Learn, um, which will allow you to capture video and publish directly to Blackboard. But um, specific to capturing your screen for lessons, um, screencast thematic sounds great. I didn't know, Christina, Deanna, have you tried Jinx? Yeah, we actually began with Zing um, when we first got started with this. Screencast-O-Matic is a little bit more flexible as far as editing features. That's why we moved toward that. Um, one thing nice about Jing is you usually have a five-minute capture period. Screencast-O-Matic does give you a 15-minute capture period, which can be problematic because we know that the students need those shorter chunks of instruction. So we really encourage our teachers to still stick to that five limit time limit um, so that they don't make the lectures too long and instead strategically break them into those chunks. Um, but Screencast-O-Matic just does seem to have 
a few more features that Jing did not have. Those are good. Great, great. So um, if I understand correctly, the, the editing features were better for screencasting right. that. But you right. like that Jing limited you to five-minute captures and no more um, for, by yep. default. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. And and I still personally use Jing for um, screenshots. You know, for not necessarily for videos, but for quick screenshots because you can annotate them and label them so quickly. So it's nice for illustrations too. Hey. Hey. Um, any other questions before we move on? I think those were very helpful. Um, well, let me let me um, add some closing comments, but we're we're not excluding additional questions here. Um, I wanted to thank everyone. Oh, Colleen, could you pass me controls of of the room again, please? Wanted to thank everyone um, for attending today. Thank you for participating. Uh, I wanted to remind you that we're always open to new ideas for topics for the K-12 bit series. And um, you know, just please let me know if you're interested in pre uh, presenting for a future session or you have a topic idea, katie.gallagher at blackboard.com. Uh, just a reminder that each of you will be receiving an email with the recording and the presentation slides in the form of a PDF a few day within a few days of the webinar. Um, in addition, you'll receive that invitation to participate in the online PLC and course sites, and we do encourage you to accept that invitation and participate. And um, be sure to join us and bring your colleagues for our next K-12 bit session, which is next Monday at 3.30 Eastern Time um, on Blended Learning. So uh, with that, uh, I wanted to thank both Dina and Christine for a wonderful presentation and great resources. And I wanted to ask the group if there are any final questions. It looks like we may wrap up just a little early, just a little bit before 4.30. But wanted to, you know, before we sign off, ask if there were any further questions. Well, thanks everyone uh, for participating today, and yes, have a great evening.